This video will cover Shannon's expansion, expansion theorem and in order to understand what's going to go on in this presentation you really need to understand what a multiplexer does beforehand. So before you look at this video go through the multiplexer slides and ensure that you understand what a multiplexer does. What this presentation is about as I said it's Shannon's expansion theorem and what Shannon's expansion theorem tells us is any mathematical expression um, any Boolean mathematical expression, you can rewrite as a multiplexer. And looking at this function here, you can see that what Shannon says is any function with a number of variables, in this case Wn to Wn, or W1 to Wn, you can rewrite as the inverse of one of the variables, in this case W1, and it with that same function, it's just now you replace W1 with a zero, or with that same variable w1 and it with the whole function and now you replace w1 with a 1. That's Shannon in terms of mathematical expressions. If you consider it in terms of a block diagram, what Shannon says is if you have a function f and you insert it variables w1, w2, w3, w4 and out comes the output f, Shannon says that is exactly the same as doing the following. Instead of a W1 inserted here, you insert a W, a 0 rather, W2, W3, W4, and instead of W1 again, you insert 1 here, W2, W3, and W4, out comes something and that's something you need to end with, in this case, the inverse of W1, and in this case here, W1. Those two you all, and that gives you F. All right, so that's what, that's what Shannon says. Shannon says this here is exactly the same as doing just that, and if you allow me to just redraw this quickly, This is W1, and I just invert it to go into this here. If you consider this circuit there, you have some input, and this we call FW0, FW1. It's inverse. We call that the cofactor. And this here we call the cofactor with W1. This is with inverse of W1. Then this here looks very similar to a multiplexer. I'm going to show you the slide real quick. I don't want to go into the detail of multiplexers, but just looking at a multiplexer, that's a multiplexer circuit there. Look at that. That's my one input. That's my other input. And then this thing here, this S selects which one of the AND gates will activate. So if S is zero, that W zero will be put through onto F because this AND gate is enabled by that one there. This AND gate is disabled by the zero here. If S is equal to one, then this AND gate will be deactivated and W1 will be passed through because this AND gate is activated, passed through onto F. And just consider that circuit there. That's exactly what we have here. Two AND gates, W1 acts as our selection and it selects either this function where W1 was replaced with a zero or it selects this function where W1 was replaced with a one. And that's all that Shannon says. Shannon says, instead of this whole function, I can rewrite this function, this block, as a multiplexer. You can take it further as well, and I'll show you, show you that in the next um, example. So, if you look at an example for Shannon, let's just consider this example real quick. What this example tells us is... If we start with a function f is equal to not w1, not w3, plus that term there, plus this term here, and I ask you to rewrite this as a 2 to 1 multiplexer, you can do that very simply by using Shannon's expansion theorem and then saying, okay, f is equal to, according to Shannon, the inverse of one of the variables, and yes, you can use any one of the variables. Uh, in this case, we start with w1, and in the exam, I would typically tell you which one to start with just to make my life easier as well not w1 and it with that whole function here 
but you replace W1 with 0, plus W1 ended with the whole function, but you replace W1 with a 1. If you do that, let's just replace W1 with a 0. Um, if you do that, you can see a 0 into W1 results in that being a 1, which is why there's a 1 there, that there being dash W3, it's not affected. In this case, if you replace W1 with a 0, it's a 0, and it with W2, so this whole thing will become 0, plus, uh, and here as well, W1 equal to 0 becomes 0, uh, dot w3 so that will be, be uh, replaced with a zero as well or so the rest of shannon's expansion theorem says that's or w1 and now we replace w1 with a one if you replace w1 with the one there that turns into a zero so it's zero and not w3 and both those terms w1 is equal to one will turn out to be one and w2 plus one and w3 and if you just simplify this a bit now you will see all that remains is that's equal to not w1 and it with not w3. We keep it in brackets to show that it's a multiplexer. Or it with w1 and then this term. So if you look at this, uh, you will see this circuit is this mathematical expression. So taking this mathematical expression, it says w1 selects, see, w1 selects of my multiplexer and you'll always do this from the back end you start out and you say f is equal to so f is the output of my multiplexer w1 is the selection of my multiplexer and then if w1 is equal to zero it selects not w3 so here i need to put not w3 if w1 is equal to one it selects this thing here so over here i put an or gate which is that there or w2 w3 typically i would expect you to take this one step further um, so I would expect you to convert this OR gate into a 2 to 1 multiplexer as well. But I'll be really explicit about this in the exam. You won't doubt. You can do the same thing with a 4 to 1 multiplexer. And I'll do this on the paper just to show you, because this is where Shannon becomes more useful, I think. Um, I just want to go back one slide and say something more. If I ask you to use a 2 to 1 multiplexer, the first thing you need to ask yourself with any of these Shannon questions is, uh, given the 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 or 8 to 1 multiplexer, how many select lines do I need? And that's the number of variables that you take out using Shannon. So if it's a 2 to 1 multiplexer, you have only one select line, so we take out one variable. If it's a 4 to 1 multiplexer, you know it has two select lines, which means we need to extract two variables. So I'm just going to rewrite this on the paper real quick. W1 inverse, W3 inverse, plus W1 W2 plus W1, W3. So this is what we start out with. And now the question is, how do we take this step further? What do we do with this? Um, and the question said, use a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So the first alarm bell that needs to go off in your head is, how many select lines do I have? And the number of select lines that you have is, in a 4 to 1 multiplexer case, is just equal to uh, 2. Just fix this focus for a second, sorry. There we go. Okay, so we need to take out two variables. And Shannon's theorem for two variables says the following. It says you have, I'm going to take out W1 and W2, you have four selection options. First you have the 0, 0 condition, then you have the 0, 1 condition, then you have the 1, 0 condition, then you have the 1, 1 condition. If you just consider a 4 to 1 multiplexer real quick for a second, four, four inputs, one output, these two determine what which line is selected. So you have a 0, 0, which will select that line, you have a 0, 1, which will select that line there, you have a 1, 0, which will select that line, and then 1, 1, which will select that line. And what Shannon now says is, it's this first selection and it with f, and you replace w1 is equal to 0, w2 is equal to 0. Then ORD with this term here, which is that second line, and it with f, w1 is equal to 0, w2 is equal to 1. And it with f, w1 is equal to 1, W2 is equal to 0, and it with F, W1 is equal to 1, 
W2 is equal to 1. So let's just replace those values real quick. There you go. So if you take this variable here, um, W1 is equal to 0 and W2 is equal to 0, you will see if you replace W1 is equal to 0 into this here, it just becomes not W3. This turns into a 1. This here will turn into a 0 and 0. So 0 and 0 gives you 0. And this here will turn into 0 and W3, which is again just 0. The not W1, W2, this here, if you replace those values into F, then you will see W1 is 0. So again, this just turns into not W3. Or with, and this W1, W2 turns into a 0 and 1, which is a 0. And this here turns into a 0 and W3, which is yet again just 0. If you take this next, you replace W1 with 1, so that turns into a 0. This here turns into 1 and 0, which is a 0, plus, and then 1 and zero, uh, W3, which is just W3. If you replace now W1 is equal to 1 and W2 is equal to 1 into this here, you get 0, or with 1, or with, and it doesn't really matter what the rest is, because this here turns into a 1, but let's rewrite this real quick. W1, W2. Sorry, I forgot to put in the ors there. Um, and this here now turns into not W3, or W1, W2. And what I have here, this here just turns into not W3, or uh, W1 inverse of W2. And this here turns into W3. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've made a mistake, but I'll find it now. Um, w1, W2, and this here turns into a 1. Uh, let me just see. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a 0. Let's just quickly look at what I made with the mistake. Um, so... Oh, no. It's right, in fact. Okay, um, so that gives me that circuit there, or at least that mathematical expression. Now, the next final stage for this question would then be to replace this into, or to draw this into a circuit. So you can see that this is a multiplexer, a 4 to 1 multiplexer. This is my output F. I have two select lines, and in the class we decided to make our most significant bit of the select lines, which to make the top one, that's just a convention. In essence, you'll have to look at the data sheet to select which one it is, but we said W1 will be our most significant bit, so we put it top. W2 is our least significant bit, so we put it at the bottom. And all we need to do now is we need to put these values in. So that's not W3, not W3, W3, and a 1. And that's our whole multiplexer. That's our whole circuit which describes that function there. And that's just confirmation of that. What you can see, just take note, the textbook didn't really pay much attention to which one is the most significant and which one is the least significant of our two bits on the select lines. So the textbook is a bit um, shaky on the way that it works there. The next example, which is also fairly crucial, is what to do, as I said in one of the previous examples, if you end up with an OR gate here. How do you take that further then? And this example here demonstrates that fairly well. Let's look at this example real quick. So this question says, use this function and represent it using only two to one multiplexer. So again, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, how many select lines does this multiplexer have? And it only has one select line. So we take out one variable. We use the one variable version of Shannon's expansion theorem. And the one variable version says, um, f is just equal to not w1 and it with the whole function and you replace that variable with 0 or it with w1 and it with and the whole function where w1 is equal to 1. So if you replace that in there you will find um, so I'm just going to skip through this real quick if you replace w1 is equal to 0 into this function 
you get W2, W3. You can see it's that term there that remains when W1 is equal to 0. And when W1 is equal to 1, you end up with W2 plus W3 plus W2, W3, which is that there. So what they do then, or what we need to do then, is this function you can simplify by taking out W2. It'll have you end up with 1 plus W3. Um, and if you take that one step further, you end up with this. So I don't want to get into that detail. I just want to get to this point here. So when you're at this point here, I'm going to write that down on the paper. Just give me a sec. There we go. So that's the function that we, that we get it to. We get it to a 2 to 1 multiplexer. So the circuit will look something like this. One select line, that select line is connected to W1. And if it's a 0, it's this thing here. If it's a 1, it's this thing here. So because this function we need to simplify further, let's call this the function G. Let's call this the function H. We have G there and H there. So let's simplify that using Shannon as well. G is equal to W2, W3. And by just looking at that, you can quickly see what the answer is. But let's take the long route. So using Shannon, Shannon says that's equal to not W2. I'm extracting W2 now. Not W2. Replace W2 with a 0. And here it gives me 0. Plus W2. And if you replace W2 with a 1, you end up with W3. So here we've just written down a 2 to 1 multiplexer for this simple function here. If I take h a bit further, h is equal to w2 plus w3. And if you use Shannon, it's not w2. Replace w2 with a 0, it gives you w3. Plus, and now w2, replace w2 with a 1 in this function, gives you 1 plus w3. 1 plus anything is just 1. So here we have a 2 to 1 multiplexer describing g. A 2 to 1 multiplexer describing H. So all we need to do is we need to draw this out. W2 is my selection. If W2 is equal to 0, uh, sorry, if W2 is equal to 0, yes, then my input is 0. If W2 is equal to 1, my input is W3. And if for H, if W2 is equal to 0, then my input is W3. If W2 is equal to 1, then my input is 1. So that's that whole circuit drawn using only 2 to 1 multiplexers. It's exactly the same as that big function we had. You can also do this using a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So if you have a 4 to 1 multiplexer, you would do exactly the same thing. It's just now you would extract W1 and W2. Um, and you would end up with a 4 to 1 multiplexer that looks very similar to this thing here.